Load balancing is the process of distributing incoming requests between multiple running instances of your application. The component responsible for this is called a load balancer and it's critical if you want to horizontally scale your application. In this video I'm going to show you how to implement a load balancer using the YARP reverse proxy so that you can get started with scaling your API. Before we dive into the code, I want to first explain what a reverse proxy is so that you can understand why it's useful for building scalable applications. A reverse proxy is just a server that sits in front of your application servers and it's the only one that's accessible from the outside. When a client sends an HTTP request to your API, it's first going to hit the reverse proxy server, which then proxies the request to the respective application server. The client isn't aware that the application server even exists because it's only talking to the reverse proxy. The benefit of this is increased security because your application servers can now live in a private network and the only server that is exposed is the reverse proxy. Another common use case for a reverse proxy is as a load balancer where you have multiple running instances of the same application and the reverse proxy is responsible for distributing incoming requests between the application servers. So this is what we're going to be implementing in today's video. This is our starting point with the eShop application which is a .NET 7 web API. We're going to add another web API which is going to be our reverse proxy and then we're going to spin up multiple instances of the eShop web application and the reverse proxy is going to load balance between these instances. So let's see how we're going to implement this. I'm going to start by separating the API and the load balancer into different folders. So let's call this API and I'll move all of the projects inside of here. I'm going to add another folder where our load balancer is going to live. And the common way to implement a load balancer is using an API gateway. So let's call this folder gateway. I'm going to add a new project inside, which is going to be an ASP.NET Core web API. Let's call this YARP load balancer, and I'm going to click next. This is the configuration I'll use to create this project, and let's add our YARP load balancer. So I'm going to clean up the program CS file and remove the unnecessary stuff that we get with the boilerplate scaffolding and we are left with just a simple .NET 7 web API. So let's start by installing the YARP reverse proxy package. This is a NuGet package and it allows you to turn your web API into a reverse proxy. The NuGet package name is YARP reverse proxy and let's install the latest version. With YARP installed, let's see what we need to do to configure it. If you want to learn more about the YARP reverse proxy, I'm going to leave the link to the documentation in the description below and also a link to the newsletter issue I wrote about using YARP to implement an API gateway. We need to do two things to configure YARP with our API. So the first thing is to add the reverse proxy services and we need to load the YARP configuration. I'm going to load it from my application settings JSON by providing the appropriate section and I'm going to call it reverse proxy. I'm also going to add some health check services. So I'll call builder services add health checks. And now I need to map my reverse proxy on the API. So to do that, I'm going to call app and the map reverse proxy method. This is going to apply my YARP configuration and it's going to start working as a reverse proxy. And I'm also going to map my health check endpoint and I'm going to expose it on the health route. I'm going to run the load balancer separately from the web API, which is going to run with Docker Compose. Right now I have one API instance and a database, and we're going to add another API instance here, and we're going to be load balancing between the two. However, let's implement a simple scenario first, where we're just going to route the request through the reverse proxy to our API. Here's how we're going to implement this. I'll open up the application settings development JSON file, and I'm going to add another section here, which I will call reverse proxy. We need to specify two things inside of this configuration object. The first one is the route for our reverse proxy. And the second one is the clusters. This represents the servers that we have in our network. Let's start by defining our routes and I'll create the first route, which I will call the eShop route. And this is an object where I can configure some additional properties. First, I need to connect it to the cluster, which is going to contain the routes that we are proxying to. So the cluster name I'm going to use is going to be the eShop cluster. We're going to add that here. So let's do it right now. So this is the eShop cluster. So now our cluster ID on the route 
is pointing to this cluster. Now we need to configure how we're going to map the route from the reverse proxy to the eShop API. So I'm going to add a match property where we're going to define our path value. And I'm going to use a wildcard here to catch any route. And the wildcard value is curly braces, then you do two stars and you say catch all. So this is going to match any route on the reverse proxy and forward it to our API sitting in the background. And now I need to define my destination address for the eShop API. This is going to live inside of the destinations property and I need to provide the specific destination. Let's give it the name of destination one and we need to provide an address value on this destination. So this is going to be our HTTPS localhost and it's exposed on the port 5001. This is the port I have configured in my Docker Compose configuration and this is how we're going to access the API. Now I'm going to start the reverse proxy and here's what you're going to see when the project starts up. So it's exposed on the HTTPS port of 7230. Let's hit the health endpoint and see if this is working. I'm going to send a GET request to our health check endpoint and we're getting back a response saying that our reverse proxy is healthy. Now I'm going to try a different request where I'm still hitting my reverse proxy but I'm looking for the products route and I have some parameters and this is an endpoint that I have available on my eShop API. I started the API in the background and now if I hit send, this is going to get forwarded to my web API and we're going to get back a response containing products. If you don't believe me that this is coming from the eShop API, I have a Lynx connection which implements HateOS and you can see that the URLs here point to the eShop API address, which is 5001. Also, if I take a look at the reverse proxy console window, you're going to see some requests here, which are forwarded to our eShop API, and you'll see that it's using the same route for the products resource that we used in the request here. If you don't want to use a wildcard route, and you want to do something like this, let's say you want to specify that you can hit the eShop API, if you specify the eShop route, and then the rest of your request, However, this route doesn't exist on our API itself. So we have to apply a transformation and this is something that you can do with Yarp. So you have to add another section which is going to be called transforms and it accepts an array of transformations that you want to apply. The one that we want to apply is called a path pattern and I'm just going to specify our wildcard route. So I'm going to copy this from here and paste it here. What's going to happen now is instead of proxying the eShop together with the rest of the request, this is what will be sent to our API running on the localhost 5001 port. Now let's see how we're going to run this in a load balance scenario. So let's add another address, which I will call destination2. Let's say that the port is 6001. And let's add one more, which I will call destination3 and the port is 7001. I want to have three eShop API instances running and then I'm going to load balance between them. I also need to configure a load balancing policy on my proxy. So we're going to do that by setting the load balancing policy. And I'm going to use the simple one, which is round robin. And this is just going to round robin through all of the addresses. So it's going to send requests to each one and is going to cycle through them one by one. Round Robin isn't the only load balancing policy and I suggest that you check out the documentation to see everything that's available. I configured three API instances here, but I also need to run them through my Docker Compose file. So here's what I'm going to do. I'll add this two more times and this will be my eShop API 1 and eShop API 2. Let's give them the respective container names and I also need to expose them on the correct ports. So I'm going to copy this two more times. So once for my eShop API 1 and once for my eShop API 2. So this one I want to be on the 6000 and 6001 ports and this one is going to be on the 7000 and 7001 ports. This is going to match our reverse proxy configuration but remember that we're still using just one database. So we effectively have three API instances, but one database instance underneath. So this is a useful setup if your web API is the bottleneck in your system. One more thing I want to show you is I didn't even shut down my reverse proxy and I updated the configuration for the reverse proxy. If I open up the console, you're going to see a lot of logs saying loading proxy data from config. This is actually our reverse proxy 
live reloading the configuration as we are changing it behind the scenes. This is a really cool feature from Yarp where you don't have to restart your reverse proxy server to apply new configuration. So let me start my API instances through Docker Compose and let's see if our load balancer is working. Here's my Docker desktop trying to spin up all of the services. You can see that the database is running together with the free API instances. They're all exposed on the ports that Yarp is expecting. And now let's see if our load balancing is working. I'm going to send the same request as before to our load balancer and let's observe what's going to happen. So I'm going to hit send and we get back a 404 not found. Well, this is because I updated the route and now it should be eShop slash products and it's going to proxy the rest of the route to the API instances. So now let's hit send again and we get back a response from one of the API instances. In this case, it's the one running on the port 5001. Let's send another request. So this time we get the response from the instance running on port 6001. And if I send the request again, we're going to hit the port 7001. So this is our third API instance and the load balancing is working as expected. If I send another request, we're going to complete the circle and start again from the first instance running on port 5001. If you enjoyed this video about implementing load balancing using the YARP reverse proxy, make sure to subscribe to my channel and also take a look at this video next. And until next time, stay awesome.